Hi guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome back to another episode of my dinosaur series. Last time, we talked about facts about the three special herbivores of the late Cretaceous period. We first started talking about the species of the duck-billed and Montosauruses from Canada, USA, and Alaska. I thought there would be three species of Edmontosauruses, but there could be slightly more. Another dinosaur we have talked about is the thick-nosed Pachyrhinosaurus, also having three species of its kind, from Canada to Alaska, and how it's different from, but tough as other Ceratopsian dinosaurs. For example, the thick bump on its nose is called a boss, much like today's Cape Buffaloes used for ramming their opponents and predators that are fighting it. And let's not forget the long neck Argentinosaurus. We talked about how its thick scales, called osteoderms, were quite useful against most predator attacks, but not all at once. If its size is not enough to defend the dinosaur against predators, the Argentinosaurus can at least stick in very large herds, like modern mammals called elephants. Now that everything about these dinosaurs has been recapped, it's time to talk about small aquatic living life forms that have been around since the time of prehistory. They are known as the dino shrimp. The scientific name for the dinosaur shrimp is called triops, meaning three eyes, mostly because this tiny crustacean has three eyes on its face. They are also commonly known as the tadpole shrimp, due to its green and small egg appearance of a tadpole, though it appears to look like more of a miniature version of the horseshoe crab. Triops was a crustacean that mostly lived in the fresh waters of Africa, Asia, Australia, South America, Europe, and some parts of North America. Wow, these tiny creatures could be taking over the whole world by now. The good news is that these dinosaur shrimps have survived extinction and are living today in the modern world. They are sometimes called the living fossils since fossils that have been attributed to this species has been found in rocks hundreds of million years old. Careful analysis of these fossils, however, can't definitively assign them to triops. Molecular clock estimates suggested that these species split from different creatures during the Triassic or Jurassic period. The very first triop species ever to be discovered in years 1777 all the way to the 1800s was Triops cancroformis, a species that was mostly European and found in the United Kingdom of London. More of these types of species have mostly been found in Germany as well. Genetic evidence further indicates that T. cancroformis only diverged from other triop species around 23.7 to 49.6 million years ago since the extinction of the dinosaurs. Triops was about as small as three inches in length, about smaller than the average human hand. They're very aggressive omnivores that feed on a diet of algae, bacteria, protozoa, rotifers, aquatic earthworms, insects, various shrimps, frog eggs, and tadpoles. And you're all probably wondering, what is the relationship between tadpole shrimps and humans? Well, to put it in simple terms, the species of triops are considered to be human-friendly against viruses like the West Nile virus, as individuals consume Culex mosquito larva. They have also been used as biological pest control in Japan eating weeds in rice patties. Apart from the foods I have described before, triops can also eat carrots, shrimp pellets, and dried shrimp in aquariums as well as they eat smaller live prey. Well folks! That's all the facts I have explained about the dinosaur shrimp. Or you can call it the tadpole shrimp. I know this episode may have been shorter than the other episodes I have created, but they will go longer as I keep talking about dinosaurs and other creatures. Anyway, if you liked this video, please leave a like in the comments section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on my dinosaur series, we will get back to talking about dinosaurs, such as the small but tough Ceratopsian dinosaur named Protoceratops, and the giant carnivorous Asian cousin of T-Rex, the mighty Tarbosaurus. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening.